This is my 1892 Wilson, Wilcox and Gibbs chain stitcher. Uh, it's got a beautiful little cabinet, little oak cabinet, three drawers, and the wonderful Wilcox irons. One of the special things about the Wilcox treadle is they put in it what they call a treadle brake. And basically it only allows you to go one way with the treadle and you can't go backwards. And they achieved that with this little area right in here. There's a very small little rubber ball that when you're going in the correct direction doesn't interfere with the, the treadle wheel at all. But when you try and back up, it immediately stops it and won't allow you to go backwards. And it works very well. Very ingenious little thing. A lot of people who treadle for the first time have trouble ending up going backwards. And it stops you from doing that. This is a wonderful machine. And some wonderful features about it that are a lot of fun. 120 year old machine. It's beautiful. This is what the Wilcoxon gives looks like under the hood. Thread one of these Wilcoxon gives chain stitchers. This is the thread holder, spool holder, and you just put your spool on there, has a little pressure spring, push that up in there, it holds it. Now you've got to bring your thread from around behind here, out this hole in the front, and it's pretty easy to use a crochet hook to do that. Just stick that in through the hole, and be between those two little loops in the back, pull it through, from there you go back behind your tension and pull it around to the front, Put your tensioner here, the automatic, you never adjust it, go through this eye here, there's a wire loop down here, you go through that, And there's right behind here, there's a, a little hook eye. Go up into that, up on the needle bar, and down through this eye. And then you thread your threaded. Before you start sewing, you'll want to pull your thread under your presser foot and behind. ready to sew. Now these chain stitchers do not have a bobbin. There is only your upper thread system so you don't have to worry about winding bobbins. And away it goes. They are quiet, smooth, a really wonderful little machine. Here you can see the, the chain stitch on back, which is a lot larger than what you see in the front, which is your flat straight stitch. These stitches are very strong. Once again, showing you how it's threaded, you come off of your spool, go back under here and between these two little wire loops, there's the hole out front. Comes out front, goes back behind your automatic tension over here to this eye. 
down here to this loop, through that loop up here and through this hook, onto this side, down through this eye, and then down to your needle. These also have another additional little loop down here that I learned is to help pull a little bit of a looser thread and it gives you a little more definition to the chain underneath underneath your stitching if you're doing some more decorative type stitching and want a little heavier loop down here this little little loop right here wire loop will help you achieve that a little better and you put it through here and then under here and then up and that just pulls a little more thread to give you a heavier chain stitch underneath your work. Now I want to kind of show you how Wilcox is set up that it won't let you go in reverse to get your wheel going. Sometimes you need to push it a little bit. If I stop and try and go the other direction, it immediately stops. You can see I'm trying to go backwards. It won't let me go backwards. Right there, I'm trying to go back, won't let me. Right there, I'm trying to go backwards, won't let me. Right there, I'm trying. And it's this little ball system down here that keeps it from, you see that little ball in there. That's actually a three-quarter inch super ball. Works quite nicely uh, for the ball stop. And it's rubber, so it's quiet. And when you are going in the right direction, when you're going in the right direction, you can see it just goes around. When you try and go backwards, it won't let you. It stops it. See that? So you cannot go reverse when you've got that little ball in there to stop it. Now I want to show you one of the fun things about a chain stitcher, makes them very different than a lock stitch, is now I'm going to start this, this line of stitching with my tail a long thread there, put her down, stitch a line, and when I get to the end, there's a special way of taking these off to make sure that they don't, the chain doesn't unravel on you. You want to lift your needle, pull out a length of thread, Go underneath your presser foot and pull out that link that you just pulled. Snip it to give yourself a bit of a tail on, on your piece. Now your upper thread is loose. And when you pull this out, this little piece here, this little thread piece that's actually still on your piece of cloth, it's on the top now, but when you pull it out, it's going to pull it down underneath, and you'll see it go. There it goes. It's going. It's gone. Went down to the underside, and now since it did that, this chain is locked. It doesn't unravel. So, the tail end of the piece, there's a thread on top that doesn't unravel, and the ending end of the piece, the thread's underneath so it doesn't unravel. See, that'll unravel if this is up top. I'll show you here. I'll pull this thread through. I can grab it. Now, watch this. This is a chain stitch characteristic. It'll just unchain all the way down to the end and you've lost your stitch. That's kind of nice if you want to do basting with it, but that's the characteristic of a chain stitch.